Hello, welcome to Engineers Mindset. So in today's class, we are going to be talking about the Maxwell's loop method or Maxwell's loop theorem approach to electrical circuit analysis. Now, what is the Maxwell's theorem actually all about? The theorem is simply the application of the Kirchhoff's voltage law to analyze the circuit. The Kirchhoff voltage law actually states that the sum of the entire potential difference or voltage on a particular loop is actually equal to zero considering current flowing through a resistor to have a potential drop and also current flowing from um, a negative terminal to a positive terminal to have a positive or a potential gain and also current flowing from a negative a positive terminal to a negative terminal to have a potential loss or potential drop okay let's consider that we have the circuit and we have this current I1 flowing through this particular circuit and we have current I2 flowing through this particular um, loop. Okay, so let's say we have this. Now, how do we analyze this or determine the values of the resistors using the Kirchhoff voltage law, which is otherwise known as the Maxwell's loop theorem? Now, here is the check. It's as simple as this. I have this current flowing in this direction, which means since this current is flowing through this direction, that's a loop going through this loop it simply means that the direction of this current is actually first of all we have this current going in this manner this is current i1 also flowing through this resistor this is same current i1 and this same current is flowing through this resistor this is also what i1 so we have this direction of current which shows the direction of what the loop or the current flow okay so it moves in this manner so i1 flows through this potential difference or the source which powers, which powers the circuit, we have I1 also flowing through this resistor in this manner. So that's the direction of the loop or direction of um, the, um, the, um, the loop, okay? Okay, on this other side as well, we have current I2 flowing in this direction. So which means the direction is simply we have I2 in this manner. This is simply current I2. This same current I2 flows through this resistor is also I2 and we have the same current flowing through this source call this um this is e1 call this e2 okay in this manner so this is also current i so so this shows the direction of the flow of the currents as indicated by what the loop inside now let's consider the um, first loop um consider the let's call here label here a b c and d label here e and f so all we need to do now is simply apply the catch offs voltage law that is the maxwell's loop theorem apply the catch off voltage law to each of the loop so apply kvl kvl simply means catch off voltage law to loop a b c d so a b c d so which means we are considering this first loop so remember from the definition i says if a current flows from a negative terminal to a positive terminal there's always going to be a potential gain because the current is increasing in size from negative to positive. So we have current I1 flowing through negative to positive terminal. So this is simply what E1, it remains positive. Now, whenever a current flows through a resistor, it's actually going to give us what? A potential drop because the essence of a resistor is actually to what? Reduce the intensity of current flowing through any particular circuit. That's the essence of a resistor. So I have this current I1 flowing through R1 and from Ohm's law recall from Ohm's law okay we have that um, potential difference V is actually what I are uh, the product of current and resistor so this current I1 flowing through this resistor R1 <coughs> the potential difference is actually what I1 times R1 but notice that this current is flowing through a resistor Therefore, there is going to be what a potential drop because current is going through a resistor and resistor will always oppose the motion of the current. So we simply have minus I1 R1. Negative sign shows a potential drop. <coughs> okay. And then again, we have this same current I1 flowing through this resistor R2. But it doesn't end there. If you consider this other side of the loop, you also observe that current I2 also flows through what? this resistor, but in the opposite direction. So which means since first we are on this first loop, then it's simply going to be, my, uh, it's simply going to be 
minus because you always have a potential drop whenever a current flows through a resistor normally we are supposed to have i1 times r2 but since it is not only i1 that is flowing through this resistor we also have current i2 flowing through this resistor we simply have simply i1 okay minus i2 minus because they are moving in opposite direction i1 is heading downwards i2 is moving upwards but because we are on this first loop and the first loop is being operated by current i1 then it becomes i1 minus i2 then multiplies by simply what r2 this becomes the potential difference for what this resistor and then again we're going to add minus because whenever current flows through a resistor there is always a potential drop so that simply gives us minus i1 minus i2 times r2 so this is the sum of the entire voltage in the first loop and the whole of this is equal to zero from Kirchhoff's voltage law this is actually a law of conservation of energy okay so we simply call this equation one so we also apply the Kirchhoff voltage law for the second loop which is now b d e f okay so applying kvl kvl to loop b d e f so to the second loop is still the same thing so we consider the motion of this um uh, the movement of this current now current i2 is flowing through r2 so normally we're supposed to have a potential drop but in this case now we are on the second loop so since we're on the second loop the potential drop will definitely be minus because it's um, um current is flowing through a resistor okay into since we are on the second loop it now becomes i2 minus i1 because i2 and i1 are flowing through this resistor but in opposite direction remember in the first loop we used i1 minus i2 which is here simply because we are on the first loop but on the second loop now it is i2 that is the main current of interest but since it's not only i2 that is flowing through this resistor it becomes i2 minus i1 which is also flowing through this resistor so we simply have i2 minus i1 times r2 that has a potential drop in this um, resistor r2 and then again this same current i2 flows through towards r3 okay so we're simply going to have minus because there is going to be a potential drop whenever a current flows through a resistor we have negative and what's the product now it becomes i2 times r3 this becomes the potential difference flowing um, through um, this resistor r3 so we have this and then this current all moves also from positive terminal now what's the direction of the current coming downwards it moves from positive terminal to where negative terminal and if there is a movement from positive to negative it means there's going to be a voltage loss in the circuit because of that loss we simply attach minus so this is simply minus e2 so we simply have minus e2 which is the voltage at that source or the emf at that source and that's simply equal to zero so this is what equation two so this is all the Maxwell's loop theorem is talking about so that's how you apply the catch of voltage law to what um break down or find the values of either resistors or currents in a circuit okay so in the next video we will start application of um what we've learned here to we'll start solving problems in the next video all right guys i hope you find this video interesting and helpful please if you do um, don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section and of course if you have any question at all to ask you can also do that in the comment section i promise to respond to all questions i will see you in the next video with problems on maxwell's loop method or simply the catch-offs voltage law all right in the meantime stay safe and of course cheers